had, I had gremlins, you know. One weekend it was something. I was just looking at where, well you see the parts where it's tore on the cage and that, you know, and where it's cracked back, the, the pipes. I, I'd never seen anything like that before. So I was just kind of like looking at it, and then finally they yelled and I got in the car and we went to the um, ER, and I don't think I said a word. That's the next thing I know, I look over and John's going off turn four and he rolls numerous times and he just lands. And I stood there and waited thinking, there's going to be a lot of people running to his aid and it seemed like nobody came, nobody came. The helmet cracked out almost everywhere. And I'm like, no, I want to race, and I've wanted to since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound like stupid or anything, yeah. Yeah. It's just because we grew up, grew up doing it. You know, I, instead of growing up watching SpongeBob on TV, we went and got the old VHS tapes of the old Knoxville Nationals, and we grew up watching that. You know? My school shopping closed days were at the racetrack at Super Nationals that week. <laughs> Everyone came to town, we'd go buy racing shirts. I was in yeah. school, you know. So, my dad grew up with sprint car racing. Like, he yeah. grew up with a lot of the stuff around here. Holy crap, I'm next, you know? Been waiting 19 years to do this, and we got to get to do it. So, that happened, and I ran about four or five laps, probably. They were pretty good laps, too, for, you know, being on the wheel for the first time. And I went in turn one, and I, I didn't fly off the track, but I went yeah. off the edge, you know? It was, it was funny. And uh, I ran one more lap, and I came in, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm, you know, something's not right. And then, uh, About three or four weekends in a row at Boone, I got black flight because I was smoking, and we couldn't figure out what it was. We changed everything, and we finally figured out is my fuel pump going bad. Nine, maybe nine times. Nine. I only made one full race. Yep, only finished, only finished one full race. I had, I had gremlins. You know, one weekend it was something. Yeah. One weekend I was on fire. One weekend I was upside down. <laughs> one weekend I lost brakes. gas when I felt a little thing on my brake. What the hell? Like, that just broke, didn't it? And by the time I got into turn three, you know, I'm going about probably 80-some miles per hour because the track was pretty good. The track was awesome, actually, and yeah. I was carrying so much speed. I went to get on my brakes. I was hardly using it. You know, I just use it to set the car and go. And I wanted to go set the car. It just, nothing was there. And off, I ran down the stairs that are right over there by turn three, four, and just went sprinting and at that time the car started on fire actually and there was another guy running down the road over there and I turned around and I said get a fire extinguisher he's on fire and so he stopped and started running back to his pit and I ran up to the car and at that point the fire actually did extinguish itself. This one, on the other hand, it was just one minute you yeah. had brakes, and the next you had nothing. Yeah, I touched the brake and nothing was there. It went straight to the floor. And I ran up to the car, and at that point, the fire actually did extinguish itself. But 
I just said, John, are you okay? Because I wasn't sure if he was, and I was frankly kind of worried. And he just said, yeah, like real slow, real quiet. And I just said, you know, stay calm. They're going to come get you out, but it's going to take a while because your car is pretty flat. And he just told me, okay. And I said, keep talking, you know, I, I want to make sure you're okay. And he was kind of quiet for a while. And I said, are you okay again? And at that point, numerous officials pulled up. There was people on Rangers and four-wheelers and... Um, Lottie, you know, the promoter came over there, and so I kind of got out of the way. He ramped off the track, and I'm thinking he landed like this and, yeah. and hit, and I think he bounced. Because the roof has two indentions of the cage. Yeah. It hit, indented, and then it's like over like an inch and a half and there's another indention. But at some point on the second hop, it had to have done this because he was sitting up he landed facing on the, the track. Yeah. So I don't know if it bounced enough that the no front bumper dug into the ground and sat him up. It, there's a hairline crack over here, and then the top of the helmet is cracked pretty bad. That's when my head hit the ground. It slid, you can tell. Uh, people that were watching the race, I talked to a lot of, talked to a lot of track officials and stuff, they're like, well, we can't even believe you're walking. But, oh well. Here you are. Yep. It's one of those deals like, I don't know, pretty lucky. And then you're just along for the ride. I was like, well, I think a lot of people thought I was dead. I'm not going to lie. Because when they, well, I talked to one track official. And he goes, yeah, I came, you know, we figured you flew off. And we came around the side and I seen the cage was collapsed and your head was sticking out of the cage. He goes, I thought you were dead. And I noticed he still had his helmet and his Hans device on. And I thought, well, why... I didn't, I didn't think of a neck injury. I thought, well, why did they still have that on? Like, the first thing that came to my mind was, could they not get his helmet off? Did his brain, did his head swell mm. from a head injury? Because I, I could see that. Yeah. Was your helmet still on when you went to the hospital? Yeah, yeah they didn't take on. it off till they got to Boone. I was actually the in the hospital. ER for about 15 minutes when I took it off. You still dream about this shit every night. But, um... Do you I'll see it in your dreams? Yeah. Okay. What part do you see? That picture. Numbness and stuff, or I lose strength. I haven't lost any of that. I think they're surprised, because every time I go to the doctor and I'm like, yeah, I got a C7 fracture, they're like, squeeze my hands so I I mean I don't know I'm not we'll see I so go C7 neck or fracture the neck yep and so like they're like what well, you'll lose feeling in your hands you know because it's like a pinched nerve yeah. in it I fractured the bone and you still want to do this yeah I'm gonna do it I mean, most people say that's enough. Yeah, but I don't know. I look at it this way. I'm 20. Get a couple years. Um, take a year off or so, and I can hit the gym, work out, make my bones stronger, get in shape, 
you know, if I can come back and start racing by when I'm 21, 22, you know, we'll see. I don't know. I mean, I can go to the doctor on Monday and they can say, oh, everything's took a turn for the worse. It don't look good. You need surgery.